Hello, hello, hello gamers, this is Illuminic bringing you some new concept. We are going to start playing Supreme Commander, one of my favorite RTSs of all time. This game does an amazing job of getting the concept of land, air, and sea combat down. The unit balance, the uh, unit upgrading, the resource balancing is an amazing game. There's three races in this game, the Seraphim, the Siren, and the U UEF. And today I'm going to show you a tactic from the Seraphim that I call the All Ground Assault Tactic, which is one of my styles of plays. There's several tactics that I'm going to be showing you in future episodes of this series. But for today, let's show you the All Ground Assault concept of the Seraphim. Today is Seraphim versus Seraphim. Let's get started. Alright, we are in the battlefield. This is the battlefield. This is one of many maps. There's many maps in this game. You can pick what map you want to play whenever you're doing your solo play or you want to play with your friends. You can pick what map you want to play. Whenever you play competitively like I am right here, um, you uh, it matches you up with somebody around the same level as you are or the same ranking as you are approximately, not all the time. Sometimes you can match with much stronger players, sometimes with much weaker players, but they learn from you beating them and and you learn from being beat and you even learn whenever you beat higher uh, ranking players which is an amazing feeling by the way because they always expect to win all right today I am doing a seraphim in later episodes I'm gonna include the cyber and some tactics because I do like that race as well and uh, today is seraphim versus seraphim because um, Paxlopop is playing as a seraphim player as well Okay, so I'm going to show you some uh, mistakes that he made on his side because of as the Seraphim versus Seraphim should have been about even which it was because uh, it did last 37 minutes, I believe. I am going to speed it up a little bit so it can be around 15 to 20 minute uh, game time. So let's get started, shall we? All right. So we're starting the match on the northwest. Uh, it is me. Illumnix, as you can see, I am already starting to build the land factory. This is my commander, which is uh, your starting unit where you start building your your um, your structures, your units. Uh, this little green spot is called a mex. That's uh, like your resource, right? There's energy and there's mass. You need both of them to create units. Okay. This is my enemy Paxlopop on the southeast side. He is also starting to build his T1 land factory. So, you know, let's even start. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit, just like two times, just so we can get this uh, game on the road. As you can see, I'm already starting building the engineers. Uh, this game has engineers, guys. Uh, build your engineers first. Start building your mass. And there's something else. You have to reclaim, which means salvaging around your starting area. What salvaging is, you just tell your engineer, like, attack move, or you can set them on a patrol route and it will um, reclaim or salvage all the resources around that area that you told it to attack move or that you told it to patrol you need to to, to get this going look you can see this engineer right here is um, salvaging or reclaiming these trees right here and the trees are worth some energy points so you need that it's worth mass and energy so <laughs> that's an amazing thing to have it also speeds up your start. If you're not reclaiming and your enemy is, you're not going to win. You need to reclaim. You need to... Depends on the size of the map. I'm going to show you several matches in future episodes of how that went. Like, what, how many engineers you need for what size map. In this map, I decided to pop out like about five or six, I believe seven engineers. Because there's plenty to salvage or reclaim. There's many trees. There's a lot of rocks. And it helps you be able to build your, your starting facility. See, I have some mass extractors being built. I'm already building my hydro, which provides 100 units of power. As you can see right here, if you click it, you can actually see in the bottom left how many um, power points it produces. And it produces 100, which is worth 10 power grids. My enemy is already producing tanks. He's sending one tank and one scout. This is a scout right here. He's running his scout across the map, and, and I started to build my own tanks. You need to start building tanks. Start building tanks to defend your expanding uh, engineers. So you need some um, engineers to reclaim around your area so your expanding engineers are able to expand. Because if you don't have any reclaiming engineers, you're going to be stuck not being able to expand, especially if you're trying to expand on two sides. If you're trying to expand on two sides, you need to have some reclaiming engineers so you can have enough resources for your expanding engineers to be able to build that up. My enemy is going to start attacking one of my mexes. 
uh, that's not a big deal. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna bound to happen, and that's why you need to start building uh, your tanks. As you can see, these little signs with a plus sign on them are my tanks. This is what a tank looks like, a Seraphim tank. And my enemy is moving around trying to harass me. He is kind of low health on that unit over there. There is a bomber running over here, so that means he's already starting to build his um, land, his air factory, which is right here. He is building his land, his land factory. Me, I, I did build my 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 air factory as well and I ended up intercepting that bomber as you can see one of my air units or uh, interceptors is right here the enemy tank is moving to the back trying to harass all of my ma mass extractors which is not good I need to send something back there but I do some harassment myself over here so I do I do build my second uh, uh, T1 um, land factory but guess what I am already starting to upgrade to tech 2 because the Seraphim has a very powerful tech 2 phase it has the strongest T2 units called the Ishibas or the Assault Bots. They're amazing units, guys. My enemy has already set up some uh, structures right here in the middle to try to get control of the middle. Don't let your enemy get control of the middle. Quickly push him out of the way. I have my tanks moving in right here to start uh, harassing this area, try to take this area off from them. You cannot let them um, move in the middle because they're going to be able to harass you strongly, especially if he mis moves his commander in the, in the middle and starts building T1 point defense. Don't let him do that. So as you can see, it doesn't take much to harass or to destroy a, a, an entire side. It only takes two units. So go ahead and send some humans to harass. In this tactic called the all land assault, you don't want to let your enemy go to your backfield. You want to go harass them and keep them on their side to keep them busy. Yeah, there's one one tank over here, but that's all there is. Uh, all of my units are, 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 are on his side and uh, harassing him, keeping him on his side, right? There's only one unit right here, and I'm going to quickly take care of that one unit. He did kill my engineer right there, so, you know, that's not good. I already started building my Ishibas. Check that out. That is a Tech 2 unit right there, guys. That is the strongest unit that the Seraphim have available right there. This one right here. The Ishiba. All right, I'm sending that through the middle so I can uh, kill some infrastructure. As you can see, these two tanks just, just sending uh, units uh, in separate areas, guys. You will... Do some successful harassment. Keep your enemy busy on their side. And whenever they come to your side, quickly de-escalate that. Take care of that. And move on. As you can see, I'm expanding on both sides. I'm trying to get control of this area. Building um, a T1 land factory. So I can start building units from that side to harass that side. Or the, um, the east side. The east side of the map I'm trying to harass. The west side I already have control of. As you can see, I have a T1 land factory. Two T1 land factories. And I am building a third right here, my enemy. He has uh, three T1 land factories right here. He already has his T2 land factory as well and one T1 air factory. He already has a good amount of units out there. He has some um, anti-air units, which is shoot down my, my air units down. I already have several issue bus or T2 units on the ground. Get the issue bus on the ground as soon as possible, guys. Maybe like in the three, four minute mark, start upgrading your... Um, your factory to T2. You need that factory to T2 right away so you can have the advantage. My opponent is already um, upgrading his commander, giving him an upgrade to um, get, him, get him a stronger weapon. So that's going to be dangerous for me. I need to quickly de-escalate that. I'm, I can't do anything about that. He's just upgrading it on the back and it's going to take only, what, 35 seconds to, to finish that up. So I'm not going to be able to do anything about that at the moment. I am able to move... <laughs> This whole mass of units that are coming from these factories that I managed to build because guess what? He's busy on the east side. He's busy on this side. But guess what? I'm busy on this side and I have successful control of this entire side right here. Which is a good thing. And as you can see, I am still building my um, my, my interceptors because you don't, want, you don't want to be caught without interceptor. You want to have interceptors because then you're going to get bombed. You're going to get bombed and you're going to get gun shipped on and you don't want that. My enemy is successfully attack attacking my uh, north east side. And uh, he's going to, I think he's going to successfully take on this area. But that's not going to be a big problem because I have some, uh, an, a T2 unit and several T1 units heading that way. Never, never send an Ishiba by itself. Always send it with T1 units. And why? Because you want... You want the T1 units to act as fodder for your strongest unit. You want <laughs> you want your opponent's units to attack your little tanks so that the Ishibas can come in behind them and just shoot them. Shoot them down. It's gonna it's gonna melt them down, guys. It's gonna melt them down. I have a squad heading in the middle right here. 
gonna try to do some uh, successful attacks right here or I uh, just kind of do like a sweep so I can kill as many units as I can and get a, a look see of what what he's doing right there in the middle this is what I'm able to see by the way I'm only being able to see the whole map because I'm in observer mode but this is what I can see in the real game okay so this is what I can see in the real game as you can see I don't have sight of all of his uh, all of his activities but as you can see I have a very healthy economy thanks to my reclaiming ability or my reclaiming start and 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 that just helps you out a lot because it's, it, whenever you have enough maxes to start upgrading uh, max to T2 um, it kind of starts escalating from there because you can upgrade another one and upgrade another one and because you upgrade those other two you're able to upgrade another uh, one all right let's go back to observer mode uh, he does have a bomber over here trying to knock some of these units down look at that commander right there with his superior gun power he's trying to build a t2 point defense right here to hold he, he's trying to hold the middle ground as you can see that gun that that commander has is very powerful he's just shooting down my units <laughs> my ship was holding up though my ship was holding on though he's sending his own ship on this side but he sent it by itself you see that he sent the ship up by itself. Big mistake, and not only, not only because he sent it by itself, because, but because he's just holding, uh, attacking one thing and not trying to go to the back and do major harassment. If you're gonna send the ship up by itself, at least try to send it and get to the backfield so you can do some major damage to the backfield because it's gonna take forever for for your opponent to react, sending units to the back to catch your ship up before causing too much damage. The ship has. It causes too much damage. It, it's just really powerful. So I have um he has an issue right here just on standby. He could be doing something with that, but he's not. Multitasking is key to this game, guys. You gotta keep eyes on everything. He already has a wall of point uh T two point defense right here. That's not gonna be a problem, okay? As long as you have control of the surrounding like for example, I do have control of this area and because of that I'm able to to push him off his his uh, southwest area, which is, uh, you don't want him to hold that area. As you can see, I already have my second T2 factory. So what is uh, what is this strategy all about, you're probably wondering. And it's about building uh, a lot of T1 land factories and a lot of T2 land factories. With initially building your first T2 land factory very quickly and very fast so you can have a superior firepower over his T1 land units. Okay? And as you can see, he sent two Ishibas by themselves. Big mistake. Don't do that unless you're going to send them to the back. Unless you're going to send them to back for some major harassment and some major uh, destruction. As you can see, I went for the kill right here because he left his commander unattended. And I had this whole mass of units right here. And um, and I went to I tried to, to kill his commander because in this game, when you kill his commander, the game is over and you win. Okay? And at this moment, I actually thought at this moment that he actually baited me to get killed by all his T2 point defense that he has right here. Look at those guns shooting all of my units up. Look at that. Oh no, man. No, 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 no. That's bad. I, I really, in this situation, I really thought that it wasn't going good for me at this moment. Okay. But I assembled my squad right here. I got that together and I started moving over there. Okay. Uh, I did notice this issue, but as you can see, an issue but by itself in a side where your enemy's not paying attention does a lot of damage. What, this is one issue, but right here, and it's taking down what a T1 land factory, two T1. It might take down these two. I have an engineer right here building more T1 land factories. Never, never stop trying to expand. Never, never stop trying to expand. If you get, if if your enemy destroy maxes, build engineers to quickly build up your maxes again. As you can see, I started building my own T2 point defense right here to retaliate against this T2 point defense being in the middle. I don't want him to to to, to be the only one with T2 point defense close to the middle. I want to try to match his level of engagement. I send my units right here to try to push into his base and see if I can get a hole in his base or at least cause some infrastructure damage. Any damage is good damage. Keep your enemy busy on their side is very important. Okay, okay. So I do have my, my T2 land factory over here still producing units. As you can see, look at that. Look at that. That's why you need interceptors. That's why you need interceptors because look at that. Because he just took down my Mexus in the backfield. And where are all my interceptors at? Look at that. That's a huge mistake that I made right there. I need to go kill their bomber. And I did just that when I noticed it. 
Look at that, my interceptors are about to react. They're gonna respond and kill that bomber because I do notice that he's trying to bomb some infrastructure in my base and I just can't let that happen. Okay, look, there goes my interceptors reacting. They're, they're heading down to, to, to intercept that, that bomber. There they go. Down he goes. All right, my, my enemy is starting to build a very heavy fortified center of defense right here and right here in the backfield. As you can see, he's building his um, his T1 land factories in the back, getting some units out because he's unable to expand in the southwest area or the northeast area. He's unable to expand because I'm holding him down. In this strategy, you always want to hold your enemy on his side pushing harassing you want to keep them busy you want to keep them down while you expand with your engineers in the back with a superior economy and um and superior firepower units uh just a lot more factories to produce a lot more units than your opponent okay as you can see i never i never stopped guys look check that out. i already built another t1 land factory he did take this whole area down but i it didn't stop me guys it didn't stop me Whenever you notice that one of your sites is about to be attacked and you can't do anything about it and you have an engineer right there, try to hide your engineer somewhere close by. That way, whenever the enemy wave passes by, you can quickly move your engineer back in and build everything back up. You don't want to you don't want to uh, be discouraged by your enemy destroying your structures. Always try to rebuild always all the time. Yes, there's always time. Okay, right here I noticed something strange on the southeast area. He has a bunch of units right here. He has a bunch of units right here. He's going to try to combine them and then push toward my side. I noticed this and I pushed my units to the smaller group so I can destroy the smaller group before he combines this group with that group. All right. He has some T2 artillery right here firing at my units. All right. He does hit some units, uh, but that's not a big deal. I kill, I kill off the smaller group. He's unable to regroup them together, and then I'll make my own push to the now small group. Now, I'm going to slow this down a little bit because I got something to explain right here. Okay, so micromanaging fights. When to do it? Uh, you do it whenever there's specific targets that are more valuable to kill at the moment. For example, in this fight that I'm about to engage in, there is valuable targets. I have uh, less units or less T2 units than him in this battle. Or... Um, yeah, I only have two Ishabas and he has, you know, some, he has two Ishabas and some T2 artillery, which is more T2 units than I have. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus them down. I'm going to focus down the T2 units first, starting with the Ishabas. So all my units kill all of the damage dealers first. And all that's left is my enemy's T1 land units. And then I have the advantage because... I have my land factories right here and they're gonna be able to quickly produce more units to push that wave slowly back off of me okay as you can see my units are gonna start to slowly focus down the issue bus there they go focusing down the issue bus you see that the issue bus being focused down let's speed this up a little bit more the issue bus is um, being attacked directly being manually being uh, directed the attack at I, I noticed the second Ishaba right here, and I, of course, focus it down. So when to ma manage microman man micromanage the battles, this is when. Whenever you have valuable targets to kill, that will significantly impact your battle in that side. Okay? So I do notice this wave over here, but I am busy on that fight, and I'd rather focus on that side because I don't want to lose control of the, um, of the south west side of the map i don't want to lose control of that side i already have really well good control check this out guys i popped up a land factory right here and i popped up a lot of engineers so i'm able to <laughs> because i noticed that he's pushing on that side a lot so i need to be able to rebuild that side quickly so i decided to build a bunch of engineers so i can be ready to do that when this exact thing happens okay so check this out this fight's still going on as you can see what's going on here all his T2 land units are gone, except this one. But it's about to get down. There it goes. It's going down, guys. It's going down. Let's speed this back up, okay? There he goes. And that's what happens when you micromanage a battle good. You have the upper hand now. What happens now? I have control now because my T2 units are still on the field, are still on that side, and are being able to push back on them, okay? 
a T2 artillery unit, Seraphim is not going to stand a chance against a, a T2 Ishiba, okay? As you can see, you did see that little firework going to my side. He has built a T2 artillery. This is called a T2 artillery, which is used to bomb bomb my side. I do notice that he's tar he's, he wants to take down my T2 defenses right here. As you can see, he's, he's, he's focusing that down. So I respond by building my own T2 artillery because I need to be able to take that artillery down, okay? You want to be able to counter what he's doing, right? You don't want to... You don't want if he if I just let him build T2 artillery right there. Guess what? He's gonna gain control of the middle of the map, <laughs> and it's not gonna go good for me. Okay, as you can see, that artillery is going uh, but wild because he's not really focusing anything specifically down. He does have a shield up right here, so that doesn't bear well for me because even if I do build my artillery, I'm not gonna be able to hit that um, that's uh, his artillery. So that's not necessarily a good thing for me, right? So maybe I do something about that later because I do need to take care of that. As you can see, he's not... A mistake that he made right here is not focus down my artillery. Me? The first thing I did with my T2 artillery is... You guessed it, guys. Directed it at his artillery. Okay? Because I want to take down his artillery while maintaining mine. Okay? Keep control of the battlefield, okay? As you can see, he has a mass, a huge group right here on this side. And I counter it, managing my own huge group over here. Look at that, all of my engineers are back here, just in case they manage to push me away. But at this moment, I will gain control of my side right there, just because I'm able to produce more units, and I am um, spread out more, I'm able to have control of more space, because I did the starting harassment. And I managed to keep him on his side, keep him on the def defense while I, I was always on the offense. Now this is going to be an interesting part of the match. I do notice that he has a T2 artillery right here. He has T2 artillery trying to bombard all my units passing through. I do notice that but I don't give it that much importance because I have a lot of units. And I'm producing a lot more from these T1 land factory and the T2 land factory. Okay, So I decided to ignore those T2... Um, those T2 artillery, I decided to ignore them because they're not really important. I really wanted to hit his infrastructure over there. Now, check this out, guys. I decided in this part of the match to do a sacrifice. Now, units are sacrificial destruction tools. Okay? I decided that it was, it was worth sacrificing all of these units for what? For what? For what? Well, to take down his shield right here. It was worth it. It's worth it, guys. You, like, sometimes you gotta sacrifice a whole group of units to complete an objective. And at the same time, he's busy over here on this side, not really knowing what's going to happen on his end. Let's see what he's looking at. Let's see what he's looking at. He didn't even... He does have radar, and radar allows you to see enemies beyond what you can literally see. That's what radar does. And he does see these units. I sacrifice all these units to take down his shield because at this time, he has one, two, three... T2 artillery, which is not good for me. So, I just I needed to take down his shield, okay? Take down all the artillery that I could take down, or take down as much things as I could take down. As you can see with his shield down, my artillery was able to hit his artillery. And now I have, now we're basically even because he doesn't have a shield and I don't have a shield. And my artillery is able to focus on his. And he does a little push over here. He is unsuccessful, however, because mm, look, check it out, my engineers will get busy. <laughs> he destroys this side, but I rebuild real quick. I decided to take my engineers back there. Check that out. <laughs> I know he destroyed them back here, but check it out. I already rebuild. I already rebuild. Never stop rebuilding. When you get destroyed, rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. Okay. Don't be discouraged. I do push that force over here, completely destroying his backfield. You want to be able to do this, okay, guys? Okay. So he is, um, he's a little desperate right now. He doesn't know where that engineer is going. I think he's just, yeah, he's just sitting right there. His um, command, I am pushing this little just to do as much damage as I could with those units. I was going to sacrifice him anyway <laughs> because I am busy on this side over here, as you can see. <laughs> My units are, just did a whole sweep. I just completely destroyed his backfield. His whole backfield has been destroyed. Okay, so this is bears really well for me. Oh, look at this. Oh my god, he's already starting building the T3 land units, which are the most powerful units 
in the game. Well, besides experimentals, but that's for another episode. In this episode, uh, that he did build T3 land units, which are more powerful than T2 land units in theory. For the Seraphim, uh, what beats T3 units is a lot of Ishabas, a ton of Ishabas. If you have like 100 Ishabas and he has 50 or like, I don't know, 25 T3 land units, you would probably still win the fight, you know. So, so yeah, there's a balance there, okay? So I do try to push up a little bit his commander with his superior firepower and he did do a nano upgrade. I don't know if you saw earlier but he was doing a nano upgrade. That means that his commander is able to heal faster. Yeah, every commander has upgradables which is this is why I really love this game. Now in this match there is no sea warfare because there's no um, bodies of water but that's going to be in a later episode I promise you guys. All right. Oh, this is a huge mistake he made, guys. This is slowing it down and slowing it down because check this out, guys. This is the turning point. This is the point that it was basically over, okay? Because look at this. He is so desperate to get control of the west side over here that he's sending all of his units, all of his units. Look at that. All of his... All of his combat units are being sent to the west side. That is a huge mistake, guys. Especially if you just got your backside destroyed and you saw that it be swap, you know, like doing a swipe up like that. And it's gonna come back around. Check that out. It's coming back around. Those are my units about to pummel this area right here that's defenseless. And guess what? It has all of his land factors. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six land factors. Oh my god, he notices this, he notices his mistake, and tries to come back, he tries to bring his units back, he tries to bring his units back, now remember what I told you about micromanaging the specific fights, now in this fight, I micromanage the out of it guys, because guess what, I wanna, I don't care about his units, okay, I don't care about his units, I wanna destroy as many land factories and that infrastructure as possible, so I do it because I know that if I destroy his 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 uh, land factory, he's not gonna be able to produce more units. So even if I get killed, <laughs> I'm gonna outnumber him ex by a lot <laughs> because he's not gonna be able to to make that up. Those are T2 land factories. They take a long time to upgrade, and um, it doesn't bear well for him. That was his. Uh, that was a huge mistake. See me focusing down his uh, his bases right there. As you can see, I ignore his unit. Forget about his units. I don't care. <laughs> I want to take down his bases. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, just to normal speed. I guess normal speed will do. You can see me focusing down his bases. So, I'm coming from both sides at this point. I say, hey, check it out. I don't care anymore. I already destroyed all of his bases. I know I'm going to outnumber him now. Okay? So... I destroy his. I, I took advantage and destroyed his mechs because me just being able to destroy all of the land factories. I decided, hey, hit the mechs, hit that T2 mechs, so he doesn't have not only the not only the bases to build units from, but he doesn't have the resources to upgrade or even build any more T1 land factories. Okay, so I managed to destroy one, two, three, four uh, land factories before he destroys all of my units. But I am doing a push right here. I was going to sacrifice all of these units too, guys. Now, I feel like he made a mistake here because he was micromanaging this so much that I feel like he forgot about his commander over here. I remember what I told you about the commander. If you lose your commander, you lose the game, period. There's no... You lose the game, okay? Take care of that commander, guys. Take care of that commander, okay? Your commander is your everything <laughs> as you can see I still have my commander over here it's not really doing anything but he's safe and that's uh, that's the important part I am um, you know a lot of people I could do a lot more with my commander and I need to practice a little bit more with my commander because if I combine my the power you know my commander with my units I can do uh, like uh, really powerful things right I'm just overwhelming his commander at this point but with that upgrade that he did the nano uh, repair upgrade he was able to stay alive through a lot of beating. Check that out. He has over 21,700 health. 
Okay. Wow. That's a lot of health right there. And he repairs quickly. He repairs quick. But um it's gonna get overwhelmed. I have so many units. I do notice that all my units get killed right here. I don't care. <laughs> I already did the the, dam the damage is done. The damage is done. Okay. There's no coming back from that. Okay. Look at all the control that I have in the map. And look at where I managed to keep him. So how was the strategy? Did you think this was a good strategy? Do you have anything to add to this strategy? Let me know in the comments. In the comments below. Leave a like. And subscribe to your boy Lumnix. Please help me out. At this point I told him good, uh, good game. You know that's tradition. Telling players good game after a match. Even whether you win or lose. It's always a good game. It's always fun to play Supreme Commander. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> I tried to build T2, T2 artillery right here next to his base. <laughs> just so I can keep him in his base. You see how I never stop trying to build? Always expand, always move, always never give up, never be discouraged. Rebuild, 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 expand, rebuild, rebuild, destroy, expand. Okay, never give up, never give up. So there he goes, guys. He has units right here. <laughs> what what can they do? They're too far away. He got too distracted with what happened earlier that he doesn't he doesn't have time to respond to that, right? Let's beat this up again. And um, yeah, his commander right here just gets overwhelmed by all of my units. I decided to send all of my units to his commander because at this point that's I knew I was gonna be victorious at this point. It was a really good game, so I told him just that. Really good game. Okay. There it goes. Victory has been achieved by this strategy. The all ground assault tactic strategy. So uh, what was it all about? It was keeping up the pressure. Keeping up the unit building. Keeping up the expanding. Don't, not letting him expand. Early harassment. Early T2 units. Um, early T2 harassment. And um, a lot of T1 land factories. Okay. See I only, I only really built one. Two, three, three, right here. So I only had three Tech 2 land factories. He had like, f I don't know how many, like five. But he wasted a lot of time upgrading them and not producing units to go destroy things along with the T2 Ishibas. So again, send your Ishibas with T1 land units, T1 tanks, T1 artillery. Send them in with that. And you're going to be... Plenty strong to go harass him, not letting him expand. So even though he had stronger, uh, like more T2 land factors, and he even got to Tech 3, I did earlier harassment. I did. Um, I was able to produce more units because I built. I focused more on T1 land units to go along with my T2 land units, and I was able to keep it well balanced enough for for my Ishibas to do their damage properly. So I didn't need as many as he did. As you can see, even building only two T, only building only T2 land factories doesn't work. Always uh, don't skip the T1 phase. Always uh, build T1 land units from your first land factory, and um, upgrade the second land factory. Okay, upgrade the second land factory as quick as possible. Maybe in like three minute mark, four minute mark, uh, should be about right when your engineers are um, have already built uh, some mexes and you have some engineers reclaiming or salvaging if you want to call it that um, and that's when you upgrade your um, your T1 land factory your second T1 land factory and then expand from there start building your T1 tanks to to protect your expanding engineers you can't send en your engineers by themselves because they're gonna fall to harassment so try as soon as possible to send some uh, T1 tanks to go harass the enemy keep them on their side keep them busy on their side keep them down while you up 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 all right I hope you like this new concept for this uh, channel guys I really um, I really love this game so I, I don't mind doing this. this is my this is what I do right so uh, I hope you enjoyed this new concept, this new content that I'm providing. And I'll see you in the next episode, okay? Keep it Seraphim and Cybern. Those are my favorite two uh, factions. Alright, bye-bye guys! <laughs>